This is Desplays, and welcome to my From the Desk tutorial about turrets. We're going to be talking about a number of different things related to turrets today. This might be a fairly long episode, and if you're already familiar with certain aspects of turrets, then you might want to skip ahead, in which case you can click on one of the boxes over on the left, which will might take you to what you would like to see. Things we're going to be talking about today are construction of single gun turrets and armoring said turrets, how much space you need uh, around a turret if you're going to encase it in armor, and then we're going to be talking about duplicating turrets and how ridiculously easy that is actually. And then a little bit about AI control as well as multi-gun turrets, which are some of my favorite things in this game. Aesthetically pleasing, if not uh, particularly effective. Anyway, uh, if you want to see the whole thing, then I will see you in a second. Okay, so you're feeling pretty good about custom cannons. You feel you got the hang of it. Let's move on to something more advanced, say turrets. How do we do turrets? It's pretty easy. You go to your build menu, and then we're going down to new object. And we're going to select two axis turret. Now you get two different options. You have a one axis turret, which means this is azimuth only. This is left to right. Or you have your two axis turret, which is left to right as well as elevation. Really, we only need the one axis turret if we're going to be doing guns and not AA. So let's make sure this is pointed that way. Here we are in the uh, within the hull of our ship. Not really, but <laughs> where we would be in the hull of our ship. And we put down the turret. So as you can see, I'll direct you to, uh, you should be able to read a little bit easier now. If you look at the left side of the screen, it's a question mark. Third question mark from the bottom. To return to editing hull, press the left bracket. We are editing We are editing a different object. We are no longer editing the hull. We are editing whatever is on top of this uh, spinner block. And so let's go back and we're going to put down some lightweight alloy blocks in a 3x3 three three configuration for reasons which you will see in a second. And I'm actually going to skip ahead because you are you should be familiar with how cannons are set up at this point. And I will go right to the completed product so you can see how that works. Alright, so we finished building our turret. Let's see if it actually works. And if we have done this correctly, then if we look off to the right, the turret should swivel to the right. And we can actually go... Now you can see... The gun actually has 45 degrees, so we really don't need that many motor-driven... It has 45 degrees of azimuth already, but because we're on a turret, we really don't need that much azimuth control. We could probably reduce that a fair bit and put uh, different kinds of barrels on there, and it would be just fine. Yep, so there we go. Now. Let's get to the reason I put it in the 3x3 configuration. Now, we have armor on the hull. Let's go back to build mode. We have armor on the hull. This is actually the uh, heavy metal as opposed to the light metal alloys. We have armor on the hull already, but it would be better if we could have some additional armor to protect all this explosive ammo in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some metal beams. and armor the area around. Oh, that's this is important. We're still editing the turret. We don't want to do that. We actually want to go back to edit the hull. So left bracket to do that. And as you can see, if we are looking right at this turret, it, we have the, you see the option in red to continue editing this turret, you want to hit the right bracket key. But right now we're going to be adding some armor to the hull around this turret. And I'm going to leave this side open, just so you can see what I'm talking about. But, well, I suppose I'll only leave one gap, so you can see what I'm talking about. But, did I do that right? Nope. So, let's see, and I think we'll probably have to finish that off with beams. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to pick this, make this flush with the deck, so we will do this with blocks. Give me just a second, and I will bring you back. Okay, so now we have our inner our inner armor, I guess you would call this the casemate, 
protecting the uh, protecting the turret's ammo. And we have the armored deck as well. Still, none of this is attached to the turret. Now the interesting thing, the reason I said uh, we're doing this in a 3x3 configuration is because in this configuration right here, you can, and I left this area open just so you could see, so you can see that it is, it will still turn. But if we had this fully enclosed, there would be no open space between the turret and the walls. However, in this configuration, it will still turn. Uh, for larger configurations, you do have to have some open spaces inside, but really not as many as you would think. And I wasn't, I wasn't the one to discover this. Uh, I got this from the template designed by, I think his name's uh, Mave or Mave or Mavi. I'm not sure, but I will post that link in the video description. I should have an image of it for you right now. But that is super helpful to figuring out how much or how little empty space you actually need. It's really a lot less than you would think. But, so we have the turret is now flush with the deck, and we want to go back and armor this turret up. So go hit the right bracket key to edit the turret. And we're not going to make this all pretty and streamlined or anything like that, so we're just going to make it nice and blocky just a just a happy little turret right here it's just yeah yeah just a happy little turret and maybe some sloping on the back just to make it look a little bit nice there we go now we have an armored turret and this because of the configuration I was talking about should still turn look at that Now it is a little slow, but it still does turn. Let's see if we can blow up our starter raft over there. All right. So yeah, that is a turret. Now, unfortunately, this is manually controlled and we would like the AI to actually be shooting these guns, if we, especially if we had more than one. But, we don't want to, let's say, or as before I get to that stage, let us say that we we don't feel like going through the process of rebuilding this whole turret again by hand. So we would like to save this and then just duplicate it. So what we're going to do is go back to editing the turret. Uh, we're still in build mode here. And hit E and then save sub object. And we'll go to an empty slot. And we'll call this turret 3x3A, because I already have a turret 3x3. And we will save it. Now, let's put this one, we only we don't have to put it that far back, but let's put it, let's see, we'll go two tiles, so that'll be armor. And, let's see, so, I'm going to go back to editing the hull. So how many slots do we need? Blocks, metal block. So that'll be armor. That'll be part for the turret. And let's see, we need three by three. Yeah. So one, two, three. And so our turret's gonna go there, but how far above it? This is one, two, three. How far above this do we need it to be? Let's see if we can, if I think we should be able to do it with three. So we'll go one, two. And what we're going to do, let's put a third one in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the AI section and put a local weapon controller down there. And then we're going to put an AI mainframe next to it. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just... If you had an AI mainframe somewhere else on the ship, that, I mean, that's a whole other thing, talking about AI. But for just in this situation, this AI will now control this uh, weapon controller. And we want to put a failsafe on there so it doesn't shoot the ship. That would be, that would be optimal. And what we can also do is load sub-object. Turret 3x3A. Make sure it's facing the right direction. And blam! There we go. Duplicated a turret. So what we can do now, I'll bring you back in another second while I armor this up. 
All right, so as you can see, now we have two turrets, exactly the same, only one is mounted a little bit higher and a bit further back than the other one. Look at that. However, one of them is controlled by AI and the other is not. So let's give this a target and see what it can do with it. First, I'm going to scroll up. Uh, as you can see on the bottom left, right now, the weapon control groups. I'm controlling all the weapons because I'm standing right next to them. But if I scroll up, that should give the control over to the AI. But let's see. I'm going to spawn a target here. All right, so if we load this and put it on an enemy team, load that. The computer, as you can see, the computer control gun is now trying to shoot at that target. And the, the gun that is not controlled by a computer is doing, doing nothing at all. All right, that's enough of that. And recover. All right, so we've talked about how to build a turret and the space required for a turret. And we've talked about how to duplicate said turret and give it over to computer control. Let's go to an even more advanced thing. Let's talk about multi-gun turrets. Now, Probably because of the way the power works on the guns, it's probably better to do one gun turrets as opposed to two gun turrets. If you, if you think about it, unless you're making it super massive, um, you're, you're limiting the power of one gun. And by, uh, because here's the, here's the way, here's the, the basic way it works. If uh, with uh, connectors, that the connectors can't touch each other. You can put you can put the you can put two guns on top of this thing, but the connectors cannot touch each other. So, which means that you're basically halved the space, or, or the uh, the amount of components that you can put on one gun. Yeah. So, but we're gonna do that anyway because I like multi-gun turrets. I think they look pretty awesome, and you know, and they're fun. This is all about we're all about fun. We like to have fun here. So anyway. Give me a second, and I will put that together. All right, I brought you back to talk about uh, one thing really quick, and that is if you're going to be doing something like this, there's a couple different ways that you can use. But, like, you can build... Because, like I said, it's very important that you want to keep the different components separate. So what you can do is build yourself a little wall between... We're going to say we're going to build one gun on this side and the other gun on the other side. And you, you can either, there's a couple different ways you can do it, like I said. You can just try to remember not to do it, or you can build uh, a wall to actually physically separate the components. Or you can color code them by going down to the color picker and selecting a different color for each of the different things. But in order to save time, what we're going to do is go into mirror mode by hitting N. And we're going to lay out the base of the gun. Let's see, and this is a 5x5, five five, which means we can probably put 1, 2, no, 3, 1, 2, 3, that makes it a 6x6. Six six. Now let's stick with 5x5. Five five. Ah! Alright, and let's see, we want custom cannons, 6 way connectors. Big enough? Nah, let's go bigger. And we will do our little trick with the guns. Custom cannon, firing piece. Make sure the firing piece is facing the right direction. That is critical. So we'll get rid of these. And these are still connected. And let's put in, we don't need the motor barrels. How about, let's go one elevation, one motor. And one motor, and then we'll go a bunch of normal barrels. 
Yeah. Maybe some recoil suppression too. Yeah. Yeah, that was looking pretty good. Let's see the stats here. Connect damage 195, azimuth 5, elevation 13. Not great. Really could use another motor barrel in there, but whatever. This is just an example. Something for you to keep in mind when you're watching me build this stuff is that the configurations that I am using here are not necessarily the best ones to use. In fact, I'm pretty sure they are not. However, they work. So if they work as an example, then that's pretty much what I'm going for. And let's put some auto loaders on here. We'll leave that area open for the gauge increase. Now remember what I said about that you basically have the power of your gun by doing it this way? And that's because you cannot use any of the space in here. Like if we were to put gauge increases in here, one gun would steal it. Actually, let's see if I can do an example of that right now. Let's uh, gauge increase. As you can see, the left gun took it, the right gun didn't. Let's see if we can put another one of that. what happens there. Yeah, the left gun took it again. So one gun is going to steal all the components in the middle. And you don't want that to happen, because we want these to be the same. So let's go ahead and put our gauge increases there and there. Yeah, there we go. And uh, what are we going to do? I'm going to put ammo boxes. This might take a hot second, so I will see you in a second. All right, so as you can see, we've finished our turret. It is loaded for war. Let's look at the stats. It's got 5,800 ammo and 29 boxes, 78 explosive damage, and 6.4 armor piercing. That's because I have a good mix of armor piercing and high explosive right there. And we have, this is five by five with two blank spots, or blank spots, two blank spots here which means that we really need to only leave that spot empty as if we refer back to the template that was provided. So I'm going to now armor this up and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so we have finished armoring our turret. As you can see, and remember, this uh, this armor is separate from this right here. So this can be, because this is a different object, this can be completely flush with the deck as it is, leaving no gaps for the odd shell to pass through, and it will still turn. But we have a different problem in that while we have a local weapon controller on here, there is no AI connection to it. We could give it its own AI, or what we could do is go over to the AI tab, since we already have an AI on this ship, Go to the wireless transmitter, add a wireless transmitter to this mainframe, add a wireless receiver to this weapon controller, and now the AI will control both of these guns. And let's just add a failsafe, <laughs> just uh, because that is best practice. There we go. So now we need a target for these guns to shoot at to see if they work. So if this is correctly, remember this gun over here is not AI controlled. So this gun and this gun should rotate to shoot at this target. Uh, assuming this one can even hit it. Uh, let's see, load vehicle, test target. And there you go. Alright, alright, that's enough, that's enough. That's a pretty good result, I'd say. I do like the multi-gun turrets, although, as you can see, this gun is considerably stronger than the, the both of these. Although the volume of fire that they're, that they're spitting out is pretty goddamn good. 
So, let's see, what other thing do I need to talk about with this? Oh, I remember what it was. So, alright, remember on this gun we have our local weapon controller and we only have one gun. Here we have a local weapon controller and two guns. The local weapon controller, if I understand this correctly, I might be wrong, and if I am, please correct me in the comments, and I will amend this. But if I understand this correctly, the local weapon controller is controlling this turret and anything on it. So you can see this is controlling one weapons, which I take to mean the turret, not the gun up there. If we go over to this local weapon controller, this weapon controller is also controlling one weapons, even though there are two. So as I understand it, that means this weapon controller is controlling this turret, which has two guns on it. And both of those guns will operate uh, together on whatever target the computer tells them to shoot at. So you don't need to have another weapon controller up here and up here. Although, because these are two separate guns, if we wanted to see what the gun's stats are, we would, and I don't think I left any room for it, but we would have to have... Uh, let's go back to edit this. Delete that, delete that, and let us put... Where is it? Custom Cannons Interface Screen. So we can see, what is this? Reload time, 0.19. All right, so this, we would have to have, let's see, ammo 4432 and ammo 4432. All right, let's delete that. Okay, you see, you'd have to have a separate interface for each of these weapons for it to, for you, for you to be, getting the accurate information. Now they are exactly the same, but you do you do have to have a separate interface for each one if you that's the only thing. And like I said, the interface is really cool for this aspect that we can be all the way down here and looking at the stats of the weapon which is all the way up there. So, I believe that was everything that I wanted to talk about with turrets. There might be more later that I think of, and I'm, in which case I might do another video, but I think that covers everything that I think you need to know about turrets. So anyway, like I said before, if uh, if you have any additional suggestions on turrets or anything like that, or any corrections to anything that I've said here, remember this is this is the stuff that I found that works for me, and these gun configurations are most definitely not the optimal way to set up your guns. So if you have any comments or questions or corrections, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.